you know, always, uh, when you have such a dynamic opening keynote speaker and then you take a break uh, with people that want to network, it's always difficult to get everyone back. Get back. And yes. I, after doing conferences for 23 years, haven't been able to figure that out outside of I don't like to stop networking because that's one of the key reasons why people are here. Uh, this next session was an idea the Program Advisory Board came up with. Uh, I can't recall when it was. I remember it was cold out. It must have been February, March, the first time we met. And some of the dialogue on the board was new technologies and how they're impacting learning and how can we address that, but address it in a way where there's some type of continuum. So that's when Doug came up with an idea of actually developing a technology map and maybe making this an annual part of the Digital Government Institute e-learning conference. So we came up with the name Sort Through the Hype. Uh, we came up with the little ground rules for the speakers. We were looking for, you know, the term new uh, is always difficult. You know, I was in the food business for a while, and you know, if someone added whitener or lemon fresh scent, it was a new product. Uh, what we're trying to do here is technologies that are available out there that have some type of install base but might not be prevalent throughout the uh, federal government. So we're going to have people show you some new technologies, where it's being used, the little business case behind it. And all the speakers here today, or most of them will be here to answer any questions afterwards. So with that said, it's now my pleasure to introduce our moderator and speaker for one of the sessions. Uh, Mr. Douglas Widener. Douglas is a long-term pioneer and KM practitioner, consultant, and frequent presenter in e-learning and knowledge management conferences around the country and world. Uh, in my prior life, I ran all the EGOV conferences for uh, Federal Computer Week, and I think I met Doug back in 2003 at an e-learning conference, I believe. I mean before that. Might have been before that. Uh, before that, Douglas was chief knowledge engineer for Northrop Grumman and has consulted with many U.S. agencies and commercial firms. And prior to founding the KM Institute, uh, he co-founded the first KM Professional Society and its D.C.-based chapter. He's also an engineering graduate from the U.S. Air Force Academy. Please welcome Douglas White. Thank you. We have one uh, issue this morning, that is our first speaker uh, has a limited amount of time with us. So I'm going to try to uh, truncate a little bit what I was going to talk about so we can get to James uh, and give him both uh, time to give his speech and then some questions and answers. We were originally going to have the questions and the answers at the end of our second track section or session, but we're going to have this one just for James. Uh, so if you have any questions uh, for him, we'll take them at the end of his talk. All right, let's. Um, get into what I'm about to do here real quickly. I'm going to go through a little bit faster, and I might be able to get back and touch base with it a little later on, uh, considering our time constraints. Are you prepared for the knowledge age? We're going to sort through the hype of, uh, and give a new technology overview. And in sorting through the hype, we're going to talk about e-learning technology map. That's what I'm going to present to you right now in the next five minutes or so. We're going to have a track 1.1 of my times are a little off in here. It's, not, it's past 9.45 already. Uh, first is going to be a simulation on the subject of simulation by James Chisholm, who is a CEO of Experience Point. Then we're going to have webcasting by Mario Lafayette, who is a director of strategic applications at Sonic Foundry. And then the learning agents from George Takuchi, who is the director of the Learning Agent Center and professor at George Mason University. Then track two this morning is actually going to start at 11.15 and go to 12.15. And we're going to talk about performance support. That's Don Arnold, who is the general manager of U.S. Federal Ingrain. And then I'm going to talk about, kind of be the, what's the person who wraps up all the loose ends towards the end of the session. I'm going to talk about multimedia and a number of other different things that are associated with that. And then we'll have our questions and answers at the very end. Though, as I've already mentioned, James is going to have, because he will not be able to be here until the end of the morning, um, have his question and answer at the outset. So let's take a very quick look at this first rudimentary pass on a technology map. We know that the terminology and e-learning is so confusing, uh, there is no common set of words and usage. Um, and I'm not saying that this map is going to get us there, <laughs> but it is an attempt to get a sense for what is going on in these various sectors, or whatever you want to call these radians out from the core. Yeah, I'm 
let's see what kind of an axis I use. And the purpose for showing this map is so that we can pinpoint some of the emerging technologies we're going to talk about today. And hopefully, as Mike suggested, each year we'll continue to enrich this map. And maybe it'll be a driving force for some common understanding. But certainly a way for us to look at some of the emerging technologies out there on the periphery. So what are my axes? My axes are time. And the mature things are going to be within this first band. The evolving, the things that are just becoming, well, more than just becoming known. They've been around for a little while, but we haven't fully implemented them yet. These are mostly absorbed into the organizations. These are the things that are being absorbed, and then the emerging is stuff that's over the horizon. Maybe not so far over the horizon we can't get a peek at it, but most people aren't yet really quite adapting all of these things out here. Some are, some are not, but generally speaking, it's the very leading edge of the kinds of things that are available to us in the knowledge age. Now let's take a look at some other factors that we have to throw in here. What is synchronous and asynchronous? You all know that, what those are. Uh, let's take a look at something that might not be the common terminology used, but instructor-led is an axis across the bottom. And for instructor-led, we're going to talk about, I'm sorry, juxtaposed against learner-led. Instructor-led is the domain of instructional designers, trainers, teachers, um, mentors, whatever you want to call all of us. Learner-led is the domain of knowledge management. It focuses more on individuals learning for themselves, not always being dependent on an instructor. So that makes an interesting dichotomy. But it's certainly very important. In fact, some statistics say that 70 to 90% of learning actually takes place learner-led, learning while doing, on the job, those kinds of terms. And it's only in the very small area of 10 to 30% that are instructor-led. So uh, this is just a small piece of the total. It's an essential piece, but just a small piece of the total. Some of the things we're going to be talking about today is just-in-case training, which is the traditional form, and just-in-time training, which sometimes is also called e-learning. And something I'm going to introduce later this morning, behind the curtain over here, just for you, <laughs> just for you learning. And on the learner-led side, we're going to talk about, um, as Jane introduced this morning, knowledge documents, uh, having a repository, having a portal, and usually the first thing you stick in portals are the things that are readily available, and those things generally take the form of knowledge documents. And I'm going to talk about the sweet spot of knowledge management, which are really knowledge nuggets. Those things are not full documents. They might just be a paragraph or half a page or a reference to a paragraph or a half a page in some document, and that's the best knowledge the person needs just the time to get their job done. Uh, you hate to send somebody to a complete 100 or 500 page document and say, well, your answer is buried in there someplace, um, which oftentimes we do. But when that person goes into that 500 page document and finds that little nugget, then we should hopefully save that. And so part of the question that Jane was referring to you about connect and collect, that's the collect side. That's another form of collect. 